In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good morning. So today the Gospel is from St. Luke. We just started, today is the second day of the blessed month of Kiyak, where we have the midnight praises, we stay a little longer, and we, comm we commemorate St. Mary, and there's midnight praises. For, uh, and, and one of the things that you'll find in the next three Sundays, starting from this Sunday, we are going to be reading the Gospel of uh, Saint, the first chapter of St. Luke, and the first chapter of St. Luke is going to be divided into four, and today we heard one portion of the Gospel of St. Luke, and that's going to be it's what we heard from today is uh, from verse 1 to 25. Next Sunday, <clears throat> we're going to hear the continuation of the first chapter of St. Luke from verse 26 to 38, and then the third Sunday of Kiak, it will be the first, but the first chapter of St. Luke from verse 39 to 56, and then the fourth week of Kiak, right before Christmas, uh, the January the 7th, we will hear read the last part of the Gospel of St. Luke. The fourth part is going to be from 57, verse 57 to 80. So ultimately, in the next one month, next in, the, in this month, four, four Sundays, we will be covering the Gospel of St. Luke, just the first chapter of St. Luke. So I wanted to kind of spend some time together, uh, and, and no, now we're, we're, this today is Luke chapter 1, and we wanted to know a little bit about St. Luke, and not only that, but hopefully we study really fast what we just heard, because a lot of times we hear sometimes some things, and maybe we might not know what it means. So St. Luke uh, wrote a third of the New Testament. He wrote the Gospel of St. Luke, and he also wrote the book of Acts. Uh, so if you count 24 chapters in the Gospel of St. Luke, 28 chapters in Act, it comes out to be 52 chapters. He wrote a third of the New Testament, approximately a third of the New Testament. St. Paul wrote the other third. And this is, this is sometimes we forget. We always remember, yes, yeah, St. Paul wrote a third of the But we also, when you count the Gospel of St. Luke and the book of Acts, you'll find that St. Paul wrote a third of the New Testament as well. St. Uh, uh, Luke is a Gentile. He's the only Gentile that wrote in the New Testament. He's Greek, uh, and most likely he did not witness a lot of the things that, that, that he wrote about, but because you can see it once we studied, is that these things were handed to him. So let me just... How did he write the, God, the, the book of... And we heard both of them when we were reading the proclamation. Uh, the Gospels, he went through a lot of the details and history and stuff like that. So the first thing he starts out, in, uh, and I'm going to skip to verse uh, 3, he says... It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you an orderly account. So he's writing and says he's addressing this to most excellent Theophilus. Theophilus, one can interpret, it's a name, uh, one can interpret it, Theophilus is the lover of, of, of God, the, the lover of God. So he's writing it to a person, lover of God, and you know, one, we can take it, well, he wrote this to us and we are a lover of God. So here he wrote it to addressing it to Theophilus. When you skip to the book of Acts, the first chapter, you'll find it starts out the same thing. He references what he stopped at in the Gospel of St. Luke, and then he starts his account. In verse 1 in the book of Acts, it says, The former account I made, he's referring to the Gospel that he wrote, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach uh, until the day uh, in which he was taken up. So St. Luke gave us the from the beginning of the, the, the angel coming to Zechariah and prophesying about John Zechariah all the way to the gospel being preached in Rome. That's what St. Luke covered for us. He covered for us all that in a lot of details and so on. So. This is a little general uh, information about St. Luke. 
Uh, let's go really fast. Uh, we'll skip the prologue, but uh, there's one verse, there's part of a part that I wanted to kind of share with you, that these things were delivered to him. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he was, he was given these things. He says, just as those who formed the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world, delivered them to us. So he does deliver to him to us. You'll see him being referring to himself. By the way, he doesn't reference himself at all in the in his gospel, except right at the beginning when he says in verse three, "It seems good to me." But after that, you don't see any reference to Saint Luke. You start reading in the book of Acts in chapter sixteen. He starts saying "we" included in the story, but till then he is always referencing things that you know that was delivered to them and so on. So let's go a little bit, uh, uh, skip in the, in the beginning, and we'll go to verse 5 from what we heard today. It says, There was in the day of Herod, the king of Judea. Who was this Herod? So Herod was the son of uh, a person that was appointed by Julius Caesar. His name is Antipater. Antipater was the father of Herod, and he had a lot of other, this is the beginning, the legacy of a lot of Herods. This is the Herod, he was a very cruel man, very cruel man. But he also was a builder, he built a lot in Rome, and he did a lot of build, I mean in Judea and so on, and he built a lot of things, but he was a cruel man. He was known to be very envious of anyone that would take his part as, as the leader of Judea, as, as, the, as the ruler of Judea. He was very envious of anyone, to the extent that he ended up killing his mother-in-law, his, his, a couple of his children. And, 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 and then even to the time when his death, he killed a lot of the people he ordered. That when I die, because he knew that he was very cruel, no one is going to mourn him. Then he ordered that you know, a lot of people, a lot of the just you know, good people in Judea to be, to be uh, imprisoned and murdered at the same time that he dies of his old health. So this way there's some mourning. It tells you how cruel this man was. And this also reminds us, Was told that there is a king that is born, he ordered the killing of all the boys in Judea, Jerusalem, be below two years old. So it kind of gives you a flavor. This is the Herod. This Herod died a year after the birth of Christ. So just it's important for you to know how who is this Herod. So there was a day of in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest. You know, he's just as a priest. It doesn't say a, a distinguished, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. We always hear the division of Abijah and we wonder, what is division of Abijah? So the div division of Abijah, basically, you read about it in First Chronicles, and when you go back and you read about it, and basically at that time, all the priests came from the tribe of Aaron. Aaron had the four sons, two of them died, did not have any children, but the other two sons of the tribe of Aaron, which they were all the priests were from, uh, he had two sons, and their name was Eliaver and Ithamar, Ithamar, and these two sons had 24 children. When you calculate the, 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 the kids among Ithamar and Eliaver, they thought they had 24 children. So at the time of David, you will read that there was a lot of priests. Uh, so what happened was David divided the priests into 24 divisions based on the children, the two children, the descendants of the two children of Aaron, Eliather and, and, uh, and the other name that I have very, have very, very hard to, rem to, uh, to remember. And he divided these 24 people, the 24 divisions. Abijah was the eighth division. Okay, so this is basically, uh, he, so he was uh, from the division of Abijah, uh, and, and he, so he was a descendant who is the, from the tribe of Aaron, and this is Zechariah. So when he's saying the, tri the division of Abijah, it's one of the 24 divisions of the priests, and it happens to be the 8th division. And then he goes on, he says, his wife was the daughter of Aaron. So here you know that Elizabeth, his, his wife, is also a daughter of a, a priest because he came from the, 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 the lineage of Aaron. So it says here, his wife was the daughter of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God. In other words, God is looking at them and saying, these are good people. He's, they're righteous in the eyes of God. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances in the Lord blameless. In other words, they were good people 
example for everyone around us, around them, Zechariah and Abel, good people. But the thing is, they were praying really hard and they were righteous. It's not like there is something wrong with their spiritual life in any way. Or, no, but they were righteous among, in front of God. Zechariah is, is, Zacharias is a good priest he's, he, and he's serving and, and here, you know, is referred to as righteous in all ordinances. But they had no child. And I would imagine one of the things is that there is a reproach sometimes in that community when, when, when couples didn't have any ch children and they didn't have any children. And probably every time Zechariah goes and prays, by the way, the 24 divisions that we're talking about, uh, they were basically they were assigned two weeks a year to go serve in the altar, to, to serve in the temple. And then by lot, they would pick who's going to enter into and, and, and give the incense by lot. Happens to be that this time, Zechariah from the division of Abijah was picked to go enter into the uh, into, and, and to, to, to burn incense in the altar. So they had no child and well advanced. In other words, they're too late for them to have children. Beyond man's in man's imagination. Just like how we were studying Abram on Thursday when we were talking about Abram and he was a 90 some years old didn't have any children but he had a promise and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll continue the study anymore but same thing Baron did not have any children verse 8 it says so it was a while it was that while while he was serving as a priest before God in the and, and burnt incense so he went into the temple and the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. What happens is, is the priest would enter, come out and bless them. There's a, uh, there's a, in Duran, you, you find there's a blessings of the priest. So they're waiting to, for the priest to come out and bless them. May the Lord bless you, shine your face, face upon you, keep you, and so on. So this is, this is what they're waiting for. They're praying outside. The uh, Zacharias is inside the waiting with, an with anxiety and look what happens inside the altar in the verse 11 it says then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense that is huge why is it huge because when you look 400 years before that point this angel appearing in the altar there was complete silence from God. There was no revelations. There was no prophets. There was no miracle. Silence. No, nothing, no angelic, no revelations. And how do we know that? You read about it in the last prophet, and who is Malachi. The last prophet Malachi, you read in his, in his, and I'll read you a couple of uh, his prophet, his prophecies right at the end, Malachi three and Malachi four. It talks about there is, you know, there is going to be a son of righteousness that is coming, but before the son, capital S U N, comes, there is going to be someone, a messenger before him that will come. So Malachi, four hundred years prophesied. And I'll read to you, it says in uh, Malachi 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 1, it says, I, behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. This is a prophecy about Saint John the Baptist, a messenger. At that time, and still today, when a dignitary comes to a place, he always sends a representative ahead of time, to keep, make sure everyone is prepared for that dignitary. So here we see the same thing, the son of righteousness. And we see that in chapter 4 of Malachi in the beginning. It says, but to you, this is Malachi, prophecies 400 years before what we hear about this angel appearing in the altar today. It says, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. That's the, about Jesus Christ. And before he says, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. Very clear. Another thing that was written right at the end of the last chapter uh, in, 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 uh, in, in, in Malachi, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. 
So here, he's, they're waiting, you know, the Jewish nation, they're waiting for somebody with Elijah because of this verse. And this is why when they saw John the Baptist, they came unto him and told him, Are you Elijah? Are you Elijah? And why? To read what we heard today is that he will be coming, uh, the, the, the St. John the Baptist is going to be coming in the spirit of for prophets he was very faithful he was powerful he was bold uh, and he was uncompromising and he was fearless even to the most fearless kings and rulers of that time he said the, the divine prophecy no matter who's standing in front of him and this is how john the baptist was remember when he went to her and he told him that you cannot marry your, your brother's wife and and he was to the to the leader he did prophecy about St. John the Baptist that we read in Malachi. So, we heard in Malachi, last prophet uh, told us about there's going to be a message. As UN referring to Christ, that he is coming. And now, 400 years of silence. They haven't heard anything for 400 years. So, Zacharias in the altar, seeing an angel, very feared very terrifying and that's why it says that the angel Esper and Matin you will find that the count us as the children of the light Right, and then the goats on the left. So we're here at the right hand. It's just a, you know, a kind of remembrance of that. So here he saw an angel standing at the right hand of the altar. And then Zechariah saw him and he was troubled. And fear fell upon him. Quietness. All of a sudden this huge change from status quo made him upset fear. But the thing... Don't fear. Don't fear. Uh, it says... Look carefully. Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. What does that mean? That if we, when we pray, God hears our prayer. God hears our prayer and He knows that we ask what, He knows what we need. But the important thing is that we are to also be, got to be very patient with God. Uh, you know, it reminds me yesterday, HRC went on a fishing trip. So, a very long time, you go and you put the bait with our culture right now, you expect the fish to hook right away. The one thing that you found yesterday that it requires a lot of patience. You put your hook, it doesn't mean that you didn't drop the hook, it doesn't mean that the, that the bait is not there. It means that you got to be patient. And at the right time, you'll have the right fish. And we all experience that. And I'm sure a lot of us, I don't know, we all experience that patience. And here you see the same thing. Zacharias and Elizabeth put their request in front of the Lord. And they were praying a lot. And, and, and they were old and barren. But the thing is, when the prayer was answered, they were surprised. And one of the things that you'll find, and we you know, that... When Zacharias was told that his wife is going to have a baby, he was like, what? But Zacharias, you've been praying for this for many years. How what surprises you? Sometimes uh, we always want God to, uh, to, uh, to respond to our prayer right now. But That's very important that we hear from this. God hears our prayers. He responds at the right time. I love you too. Uh, you know, you're eating a hamburger or something in front of him and it smells good and the baby's not able to eat food. But then he wants to reach and he wants to eat. What do you do? You can hold back. No, no son, you're not ready for that yet. 
And you know what? Sometimes our God loves us and cares us. And we sometimes may not be ready for that right now. He knows what's good. So sometimes he says, no, I love you too much. And then sometimes when you look in hindsight, you'll find that you ask some things for God and then time passes and God doesn't respond and did not give you what you're asking. And you say, Lord, thank you very much for not listening to me. Because you end up something with something better, bigger. Another what a way of responding is that yes son I heard your prayer but you have to wait you have to wait you have to be patient and he did that to Abram he did that to Abram Abram I told you I gave you the promise your children are going to be as the stars and as going to be the sand the, the dust of the earth and you just have to be patient but sometimes we tend to go out of God's will and say oh okay how about this Lord let me help you since you're not answering my, my, my request, let me help you. And that's what we saw Abram do. Abram and, and, and Sarai decided that, you know, God promised us we have children. We're old. We don't have, we're barren. But you know what? How about if we go out on a limb uh, and, and have this idea? We start working on our own minds and says, and, 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 and Sarai comes up with the, the idea. How about Hagar, my servant? Why don't you... The, you know how a lot of the things that we're facing in the world is because of sometimes decisions that we make on our own without consulting God. So this is one. Yes, I will. I heard you, but you have to wait a little. Uh, this is a very important for us to remember that our prayers are heard. Our prayers are heard with a gracious and a loving God and ultimately knows what's best for us. And in the case of Zacharias, he gave them the child, they waited, but guess what they got? They got John the Baptist. John the Baptist, not, a, not anybody. John the Baptist was the only prophet that had the privilege of saying and point out the Messiah. He's the one that pointed out the Messiah before the baptism. Anyway, that was huge responsibility, but they, God granted them that. So the verse right after that that it says Zacharias for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John and you will have joy and gladness and this is the response when somebody does what they can uh, and then they're not anxious about things they take their prayers to God and their supplication and they thank him and then they say Lord it's in your hand I did what I cast and then peace comes on their heart and this is what they're talking joy and gladness. Many will rejoice. And then he goes on in verse uh, 15. We'll skip to verse 15. It says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine and strong drink. No alcohol. There is no alcohol consumption here when you see in, in St. John the Baptist. Uh, there did no, no alcoholic beverages. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Wine, they used to, you know, use it as fruit juice, uh, grape juice. Strong drink, strong drink basically at that time and, and today has no other reason except for a person to escape or to, you know, to let go of his, uh, his, his senses or in, in that sense. So here's strong drink. And he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit and from his mother's womb. And then if we skip to verse 16, it says, And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will also go before him a messenger in the spirit, see that? In the spirit of and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the father to the children and to the, and the disobedient to the wisdom. Exactly what we heard in Malachi, the fourth chapter. And then ultimately what happened, everyone is anxious outside and are waiting. And then Zechariah, even though he was praying for this for a long time, he says, he tells the, he tells the angel, how shall I know this? Give me a thing, how shall I know this? He didn't believe it. For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And he gave him a sign. He said, Zacharias, you will be mute until the child is born. And you see that in verse 20. But behold, you will be mute and not be able to speak until the day of the things, or the, the, these things which come to pass. Because you did not believe my words. And this is a good thing, is that when we're praying for something, we are to pray. 
the epistle of St. James, when we pray, we don't pray with, uh, you know, uh, with, with, we, we pray with faith. We don't pray that, oh, we're, we're not sure that this is going to happen or not. And this is, this is it's very important that when we pray, we do that. And we heard it in uh, one of the epistles that read today. So he goes on and he says, Now after those days, his wife, they went, he went out, everybody was waiting for him, he was mute, he walked, he beckoned to them, and then he walked away, he went home, and it says in verse 24, Now after those days, not before, after those days, after the angel told him, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself five months because it was that time. It was there was reproach and 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 the, because of God, how God dealt with him with me in the days when He looked uh, on me to take away the reproach among people. And He said, "It stopped there." But I wanted you to kind of look and live the story of that breaking of the silence of four hundred years when the the, the 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 first miracle when an angel shows up and now it's going to trigger a lot of miracles uh, a virgin being born and a, vir uh, a god being v born from a virgin and so on so it's important to live these days in advent to prepare ourselves for the feast of nativity and all the glory be to our god forever amen <laughs>